desire, the will, um, how they seem to be one and the same. Um, a couple of examples of different types of desire or different levels of desire, I suppose. Um, the base one, the one that keeps the universe in existence. I'm at the beach. I'm sitting underneath my little parasol, staring out at the water. Ten women in bikinis walk by, all of them extremely attractive. I desire those women. Okay. Now, I desire those women in many ways in a very physical way. I desire to feel their skin against my skin. I desire, I suppose, to smell their breath, to smell their hair, to smell various other smells that uh, their body exudes or that I perceive them to exude. I want to, I suppose, in a sense, feel some sort of conquest, some sort of power over them. I don't know. Um, I've actually never been that way with women, but I understand that there is some element, I guess, of conquest in there. Um, I desire to have orgasms. I desire to have sexual stimulation of the extremely simian ty type. I just, the whole thing I want. All right, there, this is kind of going somewhere because this is how the universe stays in existence. Or the universe, I shouldn't say. The human race, in this case. I desire female humans. Uh, that seems to be the way of things for enough people to keep the human race going. Now, there's another level of desire taking place there. The first level, the I want thing, the I want subject, object, whatever, is me wanting something. Presumably the real thing behind all the other stuff that I want is to pass on my DNA. But behind all of this, I don't really want any of these things. What I want is the experience of these things. Um, what I want is the experience of all the touching, smelling, tasting, feeling, hearing, etc. that's taking place. I don't necessarily want something out there. I want to exist in a certain state of experience. The women in bikinis that I see walking past me are a means to that experience. They are not the end. I'm, I'm uh, sort of distracted by the sight of something like that as much as any other guy is. But when I try and step back a bit and look at the process as it's happening to sort of remove my own biases, i.e. my desires from that situation, I understand, I think, that the I want is not necessarily an I want after a certain level. It's just want. And it's not really an object that I want. It's an experience. And that's not something that even requires an I. 
That which gives us positive experience might vary enormously, infinitely, from person to person. But I think that it's a common thread between all consciousness out there that we want what is called a positive experience as opposed to a negative experience. What we want is that which we desire. What we that's a positive experience or it's what we want. We want a positive experience. It won't necessarily give us a positive experience, but we want one. Cynics will say, yes, all those women in bikinis are wonderful when you yank the bikinis off and throw them down on the bed and they giggle and you have your way. Uh, once reality sets in, of course, well, let's see how wonderful it all is. Okay, that's, you know, that's just the, the, the cynical answer to that. Um, a better example of that is, <clears throat> um, I see a large bottle of whiskey. So I say, oh, that's wonderful. I desire that whiskey. Um, I'm currently, I've developed a nasty intolerance to alcohol, but in back in the old days, I truly enjoyed the experience of drinking whiskey. Uh, I never actually, I don't think in my life I've ever gotten drunk on this stuff. I've gotten drunk on plenty of other things. But I actually enjoyed drinking whiskey. I actually usually made something of a little ritual about it to whiskey drinkers will tell you this, and it didn't even have to be particularly good whiskey, I didn't go after the expensive stuff, but I would like to sit down, pour myself a glass, maybe put some music on, and the glass would maybe be two fingers, that's about it, not nowhere near enough to actually affect your mood hardly at all, and I would sit down, music, listen, slosh, you know, take a little tiny sip, sniff it, and let it feel the heat going down my esophagus, etc. It was a nice thing. Um, same thing as the bikinis. I drink the bottle of whiskey, and pretty soon the reality of the situation sets in. I didn't want that whiskey. I wanted the experience of that whiskey. Um, when I go for the overt objects of my desire, there is usually some sort of a diversion that takes place from the experience that I seek and what I actually get. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's the old, uh, what you need is not what you want, <laughs> that uh, sort of thing. I want one thing and I discover that what I'm looking for is not really what I want and then uh, at this point some people get extremely discouraged by existence suddenly they realize that there's or they think they realize that there's nothing in life to ever attract them ever again well they have then in many ways mistaken if you ask me and I'm not trying to play psychologist here they have mistaken the thing for the experience um, I desire a big piece of chocolate cake. I eat a big piece of chocolate cake. Then there's a bit of a letdown afterwards. I feel a little bit deflated. Because I got the piece of chocolate cake and now it's... Hmm, the experience is gone. Perhaps I now feel a little bit vaguely nauseous. You know how you feel after eating a, even a little bit too much sweets. You feel sated and jaded and that kind of thing. <clears throat> what happened? Why, why? I really wanted that thing, and then I went and I got it, and it didn't do what I expected it to do. You didn't want that thing at all. You wanted the experience of that. There are certain things in there that you may have sort of... Your programming may have wanted, if we can use such a word. Uh, you wanted the sugar because that's energy. You wanted all the other things that's in there. Um, hunger is a is a want, or it's a um, it's a want of something. It's a, a want, a desire with an object. 
Uh, but you want food, yes, but actually I, I would even go so far as to say it's not necessarily true that you want food. You're programmed to want the experience of food which results in food being in your belly, which results in you achieving nutrition. But the experience itself is what you ultimately want. There's some, I won't say it's trickery, because there's no design to any of this, as far as I know. There's nothing that's sort of doing a little bait and switch here to lead you around to try and get you to do certain things by tricking you into wanting things that you don't really want. Look at this big blonde babe. You want her. You really want her, okay? Um, you want her more than anything. Now, I'm Mr. Darwin, and I'm saying I want the species to propagate, or I'm the programming. Okay, let's put it that way. I'm the programming, I want the species to propagate, and here's a big blonde babe. Um, go for it, because you're charging at that big blonde babe, seeking an experience. But me, Mr. Programming, wants a result. I am um, sort of baiting, not necessarily a trap, but I'm leading you on in a certain direction because I want a certain result. So you think that by chasing this blonde babe, you're going to get what you want. But in the end of the day, you're doing what I want. Mr. Experience, or sorry, not Mr. Experience, Mr. Programming. Now, this is kind of a ludicrous and inadequate metaphor because there is no Mr. Programming. Even the determinists will say that. But it's a hard thing to say that we are led around by our desires for reasons. And, and it, this seems inescapable when you read um, Darwin in a, in my opinion, incorrect way, a teleological way, um, where it seems to be going somewhere. Uh, you, people fall into the habit of thinking that they are being stimulated to respond in a certain way, that there's some point to this. Um, and no matter how often one attempts to shake that off, it keeps sort of sneaking back into the dialogue, into the, the, the discussion on the subject. What I want when I see that chocolate cake, that bottle of whiskey, that big blonde babe, what I want is the experience of it. The overt act is a means to an end. There's two kinds of desires here, and I think that a lot of trouble starts when you start confusing the one type of desire for the other, or when it's unclear that this is what you want. I think that this, or it's unclear what you want, I think that this is best illustrated in the case of the, I don't know what you'd call it, the happy ascetic. The guy who has, or woman, who has given up everything, given up all pleasures of the flesh, um, sweets, uh, sex, drink, um, anything that's really overdoing it, um, but who seems to be extremely um, at peace, happy, uh, joyful, whatever you want to call it, tranquil, in a good state of equi equilibrium, emotionally, mentally, whatever. Um, that's because this person has applied, I suppose, um, uh, presumably, just hypothetically, has applied as a lifestyle to pursue experience as opposed to pursuing objects. It's the distilled essence of experience that this person pursues and makes his or her goal in life. And all of this takes place up here. 
The chocolate cake is not necessary any more, because the experience is what is sought, not the chocolate cake. The bottle of whiskey isn't necessary any more, because it's the experience, not the whiskey or the state of intoxication. The big blonde babe isn't wanted, because it's not the lovely big breasts or the nice smelling hair or the beautiful green eyes or whatever that's wanted. It's the experience that this sort of thing brings about. So this person has dispensed with all of these things, not because these things are bad or sinful or whatever. It's because that level of desire is not really what the will seeks. The will seeks the experience of these things. Now, I can't see any way in which this view of things can be contradicted. Because, let's say, for example, you like something that's painful. The example yesterday was given me by the Luddite Returns of um, a quote from Dostoevsky, the human being ardently seeks suffering or something like this, passionately seeks suffering. Yes, I agree. Um, but is it the kind of suffering that the human being seeks a negative experience? Not necessarily. Um, just as the bottle of whiskey, the blonde babe, the piece of chocolate cake have some sort of negative built into them. Satiety, I guess, I don't know if I pronounced that word right, but, you know, the feeling of jadedness that takes place after you've gotten what you wanted and you're vaguely, um, I love the French word, dégonflé, you're deflated, I guess. You were going somewhere really high and suddenly, poof, the bubble burst and you, what happened? I was headed for a great experience. Now I feel slightly sick looking at an empty plate in front of me, perhaps with an empty glass. Uh, so there is, in, in all positive, or in all objects of positive desire, there's the seed of the negative. In all I suppose, objects of negative desire, there's the seed of the positive. Some people apparently actually like to um, be tied up and yelled at, whipped, whatever. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that, because that's no different than another person sitting down and simply eating a piece of chocolate cake. Um, this is an experience that to them is positive, because it has it is an experience that they seek out. Um, but by the same token, if this person, if, say, you're, you're a person where you really don't like this at all, and you are forced, tied up, whipped, whatever, to do this, it's not a positive experience. So, positive and negative experiences are perishing hard to actually nail down what is an example of a universally positive act, positive event, positive um, uh, occasion, a universally positive, uh, situationally positive thing, something with no seed of negative in it whatsoever, something that happens that has absolutely no downside whatsoever doesn't exist. But I can see how an experience can have no downside. A positive experience, an experience of the positive, I can't imagine a downside to that. Only in the overt means by which we seek to um, bring about a positive experience. 
two levels of desire. We desire things, and positive experience is desired. We fear things, monsters, whatever, mass murderers, serial killers. Um, but it's the experience that we don't like, that we want to avoid. Um, conflating the two is a mistake. Or, I won't say it's a mistake, but conflating the two in an existential or cosmological way might be a mistake. Um, or, it, at the very least, it's a logjam that has to be unsnarled. That's the will. That's the longer video that I should have made to explain that, rather than the 90-second one I did yesterday. Thank you.